welcome to an extremely exciting tutorial. Today, we are actually going to be learning about compositing Octane renders out of Cinema 4D. And I'm gonna use uh, Fusion Studio for this because I really like the node-based workflow and it makes compositing a whole lot easier than the layer-based way in After Effects. So here is the final node tree of this shot that I have. It may look a little intimidating, but it really isn't. In this specific video, we're actually gonna be diving into this part right here. Uh, and this is where actually we rebuild all of the light passes that come out of Octane. And we rebuild it inside of uh, Fusion so that we can have better control over the look of the image. So let's go ahead and first actually dive into Cinema 4D and we can learn about uh, all the different passes that I use when rendering. I'm gonna do a quick little shout out about our little art community that we're building here. This is my Discord. Uh, we are starting to kind of launch this thing and get it going and uh, get it being pretty fun. Uh, we already have just a couple people on here, but we love to have more people. Uh, so please, if you can, just join on in and we'll We'll welcome you with open arms. We have a really fun, really fun thing that we're working on here. So, uh, yeah, come on and join in. So since we are starting in Cinema 4D, let's go ahead and take a gander at the scene. Um, it is a really kind of geometry heavy scene. Uh, I've got a bunch of photo scans from Ian Hubert and his asset library. Uh, and that's got a lot of geometry in this scene. So if I go ahead and display uh, oop, the shading, yeah, we've got a lot of geometry and honestly, some of this stuff isn't even in the scene. So I probably really should have deleted it, but um, you can see it's a pretty geo heavy scene, but it's not very difficult, not intense, um, which is nice. <laughs> So let's go ahead and dive into, these are my Octane settings. Uh, so I've got about 2,500 samples. I have a fog volume in here, so it's good to crank those samples up a little bit more if you have a fog volume. I have the diffuse and specular depth set to eight, GI clamp to one, and then I do a little adaptive sampling and that helps bring down a little bit of the render times. Um, I did a linear workflow with this. So a couple things that need to be done in order to do a linear workflow. You're gonna to want to come to your Octane camera, go to your camera tag, and in the camera imager, make sure it's enabled, hit neutral response. Make sure it's set to neutral response. And then whenever we go to our render settings, and we can go to Octane render on the main tab, change it from tone mapped to linear, and then you're pretty much done. You're ready to go ahead and click all the extra passes that you want. So I always use my denoise passes. Those percent just, they're just better for me. So for this project, I have almost everything in this scene except for volume emission. So I check the denoise beauty to uh, reference against whenever we composite all the layers back together. Uh, the diffuse direct, reflection direct, diffuse indirect, reflection indirect, and the emission and volume. And then the remainder. The remainder is pretty much just the uh, subsurface scattering and the translucency um, in, in the render. Um, and the beauty passes, I always check the raw. I keep the environment and I keep the post. And make sure you also include environment on there. <laughs> I don't do crypto passes. Fusion has a weird thing with crypto passes that I just don't mess with really, um, which is okay. That's just how it is sometimes. Uh, I didn't do any lighting passes in this one. Uh, no render layers. And then info passes. I always check check uh, render layer mask that essentially creates a black and white mask between the background and all of the objects. So I have an HDRI and this uh, in this image and it will separate that from all the geometry that I have in uh, in the frame. I always do the wireframe and the ambient occlusion. Those are good just to have is um, just to kind of show off what your scene looks like 
with wireframe and AO. Um, I have the Z depth pass set. I already set the Z depth to look correctly. I have the position pass and the normal pass. The normal pass is good for doing relighting. I didn't do relighting um, in this scene and I won't show you how to do that. Maybe in a newer tutorial. Um, but it's still good to have. And then the position pass, it's also very good to have for compositing. And that just about does all of my compositing passes in Cinema 4D. So let's go ahead and dive into Fusion. So in Fusion today, we are working on making this image right here. And that's just the composite of what's happening all right here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to grab a loader node. I'm going to grab the um, I think it's right here. Here's the render. And then this is a really good plugin if you're in Fusion. It's called Reactor and it is incredibly powerful, incredibly important. Basically, it is a hub for some really awesome uh, scripts and plugins and stuff. And there's a huge list of things that are on here and I highly recommend getting on here, grabbing as much as you can because they're really good. Um, they're all really, really good. So just a couple of the ones that I have, which would be good to use. I have uh, ones that I'm going to be using in here. You're going to want a uh, split EXR Ultra, and I'll show you what that does in just a second. And you're probably going to want Nuke Diffusion. And if you know Nuke at all, this is a great uh, plugin to download and enable, and it just really helps with transition from Nuke to Fusion, essentially. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And then we're gonna use the script Split EXR Ultra. And so I don't know why this does its weird thing, but it does. Um, so what it does is it will split out all of the different multi-channel files into their own loader nodes, which can be really useful. So I go ahead and hit OK and boom, they're all down there. So this one right here is our AO. This is our denoised emission layer. So that's the layer that has emission. This is reflection direct. And something important to know, you're viewing this in linear space. So linear space is always going to make it dark and crunchy. And Fusion has a really cool uh, viewer LUT that will just transform it into sRGB, which is what we're going to be looking at. So this right here is the denoise beauty. You can tell it's very different from what this is supposed to look like. So what we do is go right here, this little grid looking thing, you hit enable, and then you do the drop down to sRGB and boom, there you go. Now that looks just about correct. Um, we have a Z-depth pass, which you can't really see anything there, and I'll show you what you can do with that later. Uh, the denoise remainder, that's the uh, essentially translucency and subsurface scattering. Here's our shading normal, uh, which could be, like I said, good for relighting. I have the diffuse direct. We have the environment, which is just the HDRI, diffuse indirect. We have post-processing, that's gonna be good. I have ambient occlusion again. And we can just put that over there. This is the beauty, this is the noise beauty. Here's the denoised volume. Denoise volume can be tricky when compositing, but I'll just show you how to do it. Uh, that's the denoise reflection direct. Here's our wireframe, which is cool. Position, I'll show you how to use that. It's a really powerful pass. Um, and then right here's our render layer mask. So you can see all the geometry is white and then the background is set to black. Uh, and that will be useful when compositing everything together. So let's go ahead and actually do that. I'm gonna separate our denoised beauty and our beauty pass. These are just as references because we're going to take all of these different passes right here and combine them together to essentially get this result. So I always start uh, with the diffuse direct, 
which is this guy right here. So I'll go ahead and bring that out. And then we want the diffuse indirect. So I'm gonna bring that guy out too. And what we do is we composite the ends together and the merge, we turn the burn in, I'm gonna actually expand this out. We turn the burn in down to, or up to one and then the alpha gain down to zero. And so now it's merged. These two are merged together. Um, next, we're gonna do the reflection direct, which is this guy right here. Same process, we're going to attach it to the merge, burn in, alpha gain down. It's good to get in that habit of remembering to turn the alpha gain down to zero. Um, we're gonna grab the reflection indirect. This one's gonna give us a whole bunch of stuff. Merge, burn in, alpha gain down. It's already looking really impressive. Very nice. Um, now we want the remainder. Or wait, where's the emission? There's the emission. I'm gonna grab the emission. We're gonna pop that guy in. Burn in, alpha down. Denoise remainder, which is our translucency and subsurface scattering. Burn in, alpha gain down. All right, and then we're gonna get into the denoised volume. This one can be fun. Look at that, that looks cool. How do we do it? Well, burn in, alpha gain down. There you go, simple as that. And that just about does it. The last thing we're gonna do is the post-processing, but I'm going to add that after we, after we add the environment in. So to add the environment in, I'm actually going to use this render layer pass right here. And that's gonna be pretty useful. I'm going to essentially cut out, actually, I'm gonna add the denoise volume later. What I'm gonna do is cut out everything in here and then attach the environment afterwards. So let me show you how to do that. Uh, we're gonna use a, let's see, we're gonna use a channel booleans node. We're gonna attach that in. So now we can look at that. We want to turn the RGB into doing nothing. And now we have the alpha from the render layer mask, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. So once we have that, we can actually go ahead and combine our environment in the back. That's perfect. We don't need to burn in our alpha gain down because that's in the background. And then we can go in and add our denoised volume, which actually we just do that. Denoised volume, that's looking good. And then the final thing is going to be to add this post-processing node. And this one we can just burn in. And there we go. Now we have it looking correct. So beforehand it was like this, and if we check against our denoised beauty, which I can check against our denoised beauty, that looks exactly correct, exactly. And so then we added a little bit of fun and massaged, added the post-processing, and now it just looks so good, it looks so good. All right, congratulations. That is the first pass of creating or compositing together all of these layers. Next thing we're gonna do is uh, go ahead and dive into the info passes and compositing some smoke effects and dust effects into the shot. All right, thank you very much.